People often ask, what is your school's approach to technology? Good question. Here's our approach. We believe technology is a tool, not a teacher. Let's take a moment to consider this. Think about a common tool, a hammer or a screwdriver. You don't expect these to teach you anything, but if you learn how to use them, they can be very useful to get a specific job done. So we teach students how to use technology tools. We teach students how to type in fourth grade, a useful skill. We teach middle school students how to write an essay in Word, how to make graphs and charts in Excel, how to make a presentation with PowerPoint. These are useful tools that they need in life. We teach students basic programming skills starting in middle school. We teach students how to use the internet for research and how to discern which sources are reliable and which are not. Our juniors and seniors learn MATLAB, a programming language similar to Python, which is used in many engineering, science, and financial settings. We have robotics clubs in middle and upper schools. You'll notice that in every case, the student is the primary agent, the actor who is using the technology in order to create or produce something. There are other technologies whereby the technology is the primary agent and the student is being acted upon by the technology. For example, educational videos with lots of music and flashing lights and sounds that are meant to engage children or online learning games. While these other technologies are creative and entertaining, they're not proven to enhance learning. Many schools use these, but we do not. Our approach to instruction is that the student should be the agent of their own learning. We found that he or she who does the thinking and the acting and the speaking does the learning. Some schools have decided to use iPads or Chromebooks instead of physical books. As attractive as that may be to some, to not have to carry around books, this approach is not proven to enhance learning. In fact, in many cases, it's been shown to distract learners. There are pop-ups, texts, instant or direct messages that interrupt students' focus. And there's always the temptation to check email or Instagram or whatever the latest social media app is. The iPad ends up acting on the student rather than the student using the technology as a tool. So we find that using actual physical books, underlining them, looking at each other as we discuss them around the table, promotes students becoming the agents of their own learning and cultivates more interaction between students and with the instructor. There's no shortage of media and technology in our children's lives. What is in short supply is the ability to attend. That is, the ability to pay attention and track a story or an argument that's longer than 125 characters, to read for understanding, to make a claim and defend it in writing or in person, to follow an argument or an experiment from beginning to end. That is what we value as true learning. Finally, another technology that ends up using our students rather than being used is the smartphone. We have found that when the phones come out, the heads go down and the conversations stop. Phones are a great tool for communication, but they compete for students' attention. They distract and they detract from relationship and community building. Our school does not allow the use of cell phones or smartphones during the school day. And so you see, we value technology as a tool for our students to use to create and to organize and to present and to produce. We shy away from and avoid situations where technology tends to do the using and the shaping. Now, there's another question that parents ask. What do you recommend about technology and phones in the home? That is a question for another vlog post. Stay tuned.